Good evening. So last week, Pietro, and actually the previous two weeks before, Pietro was talking about insurance. And even me, I learned something from Pietro. She's an insurance broker and she knows her stuff. This week, we will see whether we will need wind generators and hydro generators. So I will go through a couple of wind generators and then a couple of hydro generators. Feel the spray of the waves on my face. Atlantic Indian Ocean Blue. Whoa, land in sight to starboard. Got me home from where I roam. But first, some good news. What do you think is this picture? You cannot see the picture. Don't worry. I also couldn't figure this one out in the beginning. And then I started thinking outside of the box. And when you start thinking outside of the box, it looks like this. Just to give you an idea how big the roof is, you know, many people say the Leopard 45 roof is big. It is big. Check this out. Okay, so we need to discuss the couple of wind generators. I'm not sure which way this is now going to be, but here is uh, the, the wind generators that I'm looking at. And Marcel gave a couple of good advice on wind generators. And Marcel gave us also some advice on hydro generators. So he proposed the silent wind and also the sea and what or what and sea hydro generator and as as per Frux usual I didn't take him on his word I actually went and dig some little bit deeper let's see what we actually found so the silent wind if you look at the picture it is a sexy one I can see why Marcel selected that one I like the three blades first of all three blades is pretty cool and those blue blades, they just look so cool, isn't it? And then if you look at the blue blades a little bit closer, you will see they're actually handmade fiber layer. So, handmade, I'm not so happy with handmade. I'm a super techie. Um, I would like things to be automated and processed. But there is something about handmade carbon fiber blades. Fuel in, uh, or this mold injected blades, they're not always that cool. So let us see further what, what the silent wind. So here is the output wattage of the silent wind. If you can look at it, it starts more or less at 2.2 meters per second or around 4 knots of wind. That is actually when it starts up and it kicks in a little bit later. So it will start turning, but it's not necessarily that you will have a charge at that moment. And because it is wind, it's not as um, exponential as, as, as water is. As you can see, it, it, the curve is kind of like climbing up quite fast and then around 25, uh, 29 knots. That is, that is where we get 420 volt, uh, watts. So 200, uh, 420 watts at 29 knots of wind. Not sure I really want to sail around in 29 knots of wind all the time. But this is the output. So 420 watts at 29 volts. So the next one we're looking at is the, is the air range. 
Um, there's two of them, the Air X Marine and the Air Breeze. And these guys, they're from Australia and they're not giving me all the information I wanted. So they don't give it, for example, the wattage is per month. And <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with wattage per month. So, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't know. Anyway, so this is how it looks like. It's pretty sexy. I don't think it is a problem with, with the form and the shape. I think it looks pretty sexy. It's three blades, which I like. Um, and here is the, the, the curves. The, oh, and the curves. So I cannot show you the curves because it's per month. And I cannot really... We want it per per wind and to see how much if we have so much wind this is how much wattage we get isn't it so i cannot tell you on any of the air models what is the wattage per knots of wind that we're going to get sorry so the next one we're going to look at is the d400 um pretty cool one and the d400 looks something like this I'm not sure I like the blades, the, the five blades arrangement. I'm a minimalistic man, and so I might be a little bit biased here. So, mm -hmm. not sure I like the five blades. But they claim it's very silent, they claim it's also very good. Um, and here is the graphs, the performance of that, and that is on a 12 volt one, you can see. It starts around four, um, four knots. So at four knots, you already start getting some charge. And then around, if you look at the same, say 30 knots, you get 40 amps that it goes um, into the battery. So it's pretty impressive, this five blades, and it starts very early. Um, the startup is pretty, pretty decent. The next, and, and, and basically it's just three, right? So um, the next one we're going to look at is the Rutland. The first one is Rutland 1200 or 1200 like the Americans want to say. And this is how the picture looks like. I think it is not a bad shape. It looks like a little airplane. And since I'm a pilot, I'm very attractive to this. It's really not too bad. Here is the... The performance curve um, for the Ratland 1200 and you can also see if we look more or less at the same thing about say 27 then we get almost 500 so it's 483 watts at 29 knots so this is pretty impressive and the startup the cutting for that not really the startup but the cutting for that is around four knots so I think it's also a very cool one I have no problems with this one then another one that we can look at for the Ratland series is the Ratland 914i it's a very small compact one maybe a little bit overweight but this is a picture if you look at the picture again it's this one has even more blades, six blades. Uh, and it's looking like a Zeppelin. Not sure I like that. But let's look at the curves. So for the 914 charge current versus the wind speed, you can see it is kicking in actually very early. Um, like almost two point almost like three watts and uh, three knots and then uh, okay three meters per second um, I will later on translate all of this to to knots of wind so you will see and then if you get to to the 15 uh, meters which is around 29 knots you will see that we're getting 18 amps not sure it looks like a very small one it's not really for the big guys, right? So we will need to look at the summary where I sum all of these things up. It's very confusing how these guys are doing the, 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 the graphs. So now that we see all of those things, 
Let me show you a summary. So here below is the summary. And you can see I've tried to, to put everything together in the same units. If you look at the same units, you can see here below that we have what is a startup charge and that is all in wind speed. So we know knots and that makes more sense for us sailors. I'm a couch sailor, so I'm not really a sailor yet. So this is, if I need to say it in knots, this is what it is. And then also I give you the, the watts, I give you the amps. And because of the monthly ones, I cannot tell you anything about the air ones. I try to convert one of them after I read a lot of websites. I could find something about it. Uh, was not, it's a guess, it's a guesstimate. So I cannot really tell you what is the maximum watts for the airs. But I assume from the one website, this is what it is. And then the maximum wind. So the maximum wind that we're looking at is where it will cut out uh, or where it will destroy itself. So some of them don't give the maximum speed, other ones is giving the maximum speed. And if you look at the maximum speed for these ones, they look pretty cool. Uh, pretty high, 100 kilometers per hour or 100 knots. Sorry, not kilometers per hour, 100 knots. The silent wind is at 65 knots, which is hurricane speeds. And since the Leopard 45 can handle 100 kilometers an hour wind, I think we will not go much further than that. If we are at that wind speeds, we in trouble. Okay, so interesting thing is if you look down here right on this side you see the kilograms and the silent wind is really very lightweight and and so if you look at just the assembly and the way they made it um, the carbon fiber blades it's also a brushless motor i think this this really starts to come into the thing and if you look at the diameters the, the size of the blades it's not that big, so you can actually raise it a little bit above your canopy or above your solar panels like we were going to do. Then you will see that it is actually fitting quite well. The only one that I can find for the warranty is this one. And then there's comparative prices. I think the comparative prices also tells a story of its own. And if I need to look at this, I think Marcel did not do a bad choice. Oh. Okay, so I think Marcel was on the right track. So let us look at the, the silent wind, all the specifications. And here you can see all the specifications. And it is in meters per second, mile per hour and so on. But you can see it is, it is actually pretty impressive um, specifications. Now the one that is really awesome about this whole thing is the Volvo Ocean Race. Look at this. It, they also been the Volvo Ocean Race actually selected the silent wind as the wind generator. So well done Marcel on this one. So the next topic that we're going to cover is the, 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 the hydro generators. And hydro generators, I basically look at four of them. And I have some links below where I found most of it. But the way I did it was like Google um, search. And then you look at, the, at the, the search parameters, which ones is, of course, on the first page and on the second page and on the third page. I was not really interested on, on the others one because after the third page, actually after the second page, everything was starting to get homemade things like customized things and it looks like in a perspex box and so I, I couldn't find really good ones. I did however found in 2007 some some statistics and I put the links down here as below and it is very very old so you can go and look at that and I had some things that silent wind need to fix so go and have a look at that. But it's very old, so you will also see that most of those generators doesn't even exist anymore. 
So for the hydrogen generators, I'm going to look at this four. And the one that Marcel gave me, let me do it like this. The one that Marcel was giving me is the the what and C. So if you know about the selling channel called Lucky Fish Got Away, they actually have a very good and the link will be I think here. Yeah. So I put the link up there. You can actually go and watch at uh, Lucky like Fish Got Away. And he's got a whole series about it. And he was actually mentioned by what and see on their personal website. So he's actually quite a cool dude when it comes to this. And he's using this 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 very fancy um, lashing catamaran. Not a big one, but it is actually quite cool. You should actually go and have a look at Like a Fish Got Away. And I like the Waram, Waram, Waram catamaran. It's actually quite cool. So this is how the What in Sea looks like. Now let's look at the power curve. Um, we're going to, uh, for, for, for the purpose of this, I'm only going to use the, the 240 um, the propeller, 240 millimeter propeller for all of the ones. And this is the green line in this one. So you can see it, it starts up pretty early. It's not a bad idea to... And then if you look at the five knots, um, I think the leopard catamaran is pretty fast in the water. So we will definitely do while sailing five. And if we go below five, and we in a hurry, we can really switch on a generator. And by that time we switch on a generator, we actually charge it, the batteries with the generator. So let us say five knots is the, is the cutoff point. You can see it can go up to 12 knots. There is a racing one that goes much higher. And you know now already what I mean by a racing. You will see later on why this is my favorite too. So, if you look at the 240, it's actually quite cool. I, I think if you look at the thing, the catamaran is actually really, really, really fast. The leopard. Ta-da! It's very fast. Um, then the next one that we're looking at, the next one is the sail gen. And I'm looking at the high speed um, propeller, which is a 240. That is for them the high speed propeller. So if you look at the high-speed propeller, this is a picture of it. So the whole thing is not there. It's only the propeller that's submerged inside the... the not sure how it works. I say only the propellers in, in, the, in the water. And I've got a hydro vein, uh, like a, a vein that keeps it 50 centimeters below the water. I think it looks and works great if you only work in calm water. But if you look at how the oceans is moving and the, and the boats will go up and down, up and down, and the stern is lifting sometimes very high out of the water and sometimes very low in the water. Um, I'm not that couch. I, I've crossed the Atlantic once. So I, I noticed that these things, uh, that if you want to get up on board at the back of the boat, it goes pretty high and pretty low. So um, if you look at that thing, I'm not sure how that thing is working, but they say the, the, the propeller is there and then actually the generator is, is up there. But if you look at the structure, yeah, okay, that is it. I think just look at it. Let us look at the, the curve. So if you look at the curve um, and we need to look at the high speed impeller. So the standard impeller we cannot look at because we, Definitely going to be sailing more than eight knots at one point. Um, so if you look at the high speed impeller then of the propeller, then you can see it starts already around three knots and then about maximum is about 11 knots. So it is already getting outside the range of, of, of what the Leopard, I think the Leopard is going to, Leopard 45 is definitely going to do 12 very easily. So, well, this is the power curve for that one. The next one that we're looking at is the Safe Marine H240. The 240 is, of course, again, the propeller size. 
So Safe Marine H240. So uh, this is the picture for the Safe Marine, and you can see they actually using a like a, a venturi effect where the the water is forced into a venturi, and this venturi will actually turn this propeller much faster. It has many 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 blades, which is okay, especially with the with the venturi effect. So I think that is not a bad idea. And here is the graph. So if you look at it, it also starts very, very early because of the Venturi effect, but it goes up to 10 knots. Sorry, it is in France, um, I think. I think it's France. It might even be Swedish or Finnish, I don't know. So, and you can see it if you look at the 10 knots thing, that is more or less where they start going out. So. Again, this one might not work well for for the for the Leopard 45. So the last one we're going to look at is the hydro charge. So the hydro charge is actually a pretty cool one. Um, this is how it looks like. So the hydro charge is also more or less the same one as the what and see that you lift it up like this with a rope. The hydro charge, if you if you pull it up, it's it's a four to one ratio to pull it up. So it's not that easy to pull it up, but it is using more or less the same techniques as the what and see. I couldn't find the hydro charge curve. Um, this is all they gave on their website, and this is all I could find. So there's no curve for the hydro curve. But in summary, if you look in summary in below, then you will see again what and see Marcel's um, advice is right on top. And you will see that the wattage of that one is not too bad. The what and see is actually pretty cool. The amps that it generated is also very good. Almost the same, it's not almost, it is the same as the hydro generator. Then if you look, at the, the speed, if you look at the speed down below here, you will see actually that the speed we would like to know is 15. We know that the Leopard 45 can go around maximum, I think, 18. The whole speed, I think, is about 20. So 18 is, is pushing it already very much. So 15, I think, is a very good one. The others, I could not find the maximum speed for it, and then the safe marine was 10 knots, if you look at the curve. So I deducted that from the curves. Very interesting is the kilograms. If you look at the kilograms below, the what in see is actually very lightweight, and, and it comes in a very good, well packaged. The, the, the blade is very sexy. I, I like the what in package, uh, the what in see one. Um, the prop diameter for all of them is the same, except for the hydro generator, hydro charger, the, the one at the bottom, which is a little bit bigger at 360 millimeters. So maybe that is why it also, also reached the same wattage, but that is also the main reason why it cannot go that fast speed. The smaller the, the impellers, or the, yeah, basically the impellers, the faster it will go. You will even see the racing ones is much smaller because the turbine is running very fast. So, and then the price. Marcel, you selected the most expensive one. But if I look at the weight, if I look at the speed, if I look at the, at the wattage that we're going to get, I think it is actually very good money for the value. And again, what what made me think this is the best one? And then, this is the main clinking point again. Volvo Ocean Race. Here we go. So, Volvo Ocean Race. You see that? Sorry. You see that yellow thing there? That. That is the Volvo Ocean Race selecting the what and see one. So, that little bugger over there is the what and see. So I think Marcel did quite a good job. What are we going to select? So why am I looking at these things for the first? If we do go to very high uh, latitudes or very high latitudes north or south, 
then we need to the sun is going to be at a very very bad angle so it's not going to hit the, the solar panels at the right angle so I will need something else also if you if there's a lot of um, clouds very cloudy days um, in succession you need to start running the, the engine or you can have a wind turbine to do that now if we're going very low south like the, the, the Antarctica and those places down 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 south in the southern ocean we will not see the Sun there will be definitely enough wind um, so these two will work then so the the wind will work for us and the solar panel will be cancelled out but if you go into the tropics and on our crossing we had to run the engine at least three hours a day to actually charge the batteries so but if you could do that and i am not going to have a spinnaker as you guys already know i will have a code d or a code zero i will do an uh, episode on that a little bit later What's the difference between code D and code zero? But also, and why I have the code D and code zero. But if you do go downwind, I'm not going to have a spinnaker. And that means I will not be dead downwind. I will not be in a run. And because I'm not in a run, the wind, the parent wind will not die off. But it will die off somehow. And if I do have those big sails up, most of the solar panels will be covered. So I need something, if I do a, a crossing, not in the Southern Ocean, of course, but if I do a crossing in the tropics or in Atlantic or Pacific, where I go downwind with the trade winds, then I will need something in the water that actually will charge the batteries all the time. So what did I decide? I decided to have actually both of them. So I will have a wind generator, one of them, and I will have a hydrogen generator, one of them. And they will have the solar panels and keep in mind I don't have a generator I don't have a diesel generator on board so I only have my two diesel motors I have the solar panels now we will have something to do for the wind if it is cloudy and stormy and I'm down in the south a very very low uh, high latitudes and then if I'm in the tropics and I'm doing a, a, a downwind run or very close to downwind then I will have the hydro, hydro generators. So, Marcel, good on you. I think you've done a great job in looking for the right stuff for me. Um, and I researched it and I found that you are good. So, next week, hope to see you. Well, not really next week. We are trying to go per topic, not necessarily per week. And very soon, when we actually start sailing, and we will start sailing in around 12 weeks from now. So three months from now, we will start sailing. Myself, 11 weeks from today, I will be retired. I will be out of Malawi and I will be somewhere that I don't need to worry about computers. Perhaps Premier Pro, that's what I will worry about. Okay, perhaps I will worry about the sea currents. Okay, perhaps I will worry about the radar. Yeah, so there will be technology in my life for sure, but I don't need to worry about any more about elections, election result management, no, no more anymore about ID management and ID and civil voter regi uh, civil registration and vital statistics. Nothing like that anymore. So next week we're going to do, or next topic will be the code D and the code zero. Why do I have them? and what are they what are code d what are code zero so until next episode see you then Sailing, sailing.